If you write long formulas in Excel, you're gonna need the brand new Excel Let function. You might have already heard about it and already know its advantages, which are, it can make your formulas easier to read and it can improve the performance of your formulas so they run faster. Now this applies to formulas that use the same expression multiple times. With the let statement, you can let Excel calculate that expression just once and then reuse it as often as you need, which results in your formulas running faster. These two benefits are also shared on the Microsoft support page. Now, I was really curious about the second point. Is the impact on performance that noticeable? That's what we're gonna find out today. Before we get started, a quick thanks goes to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. I have a special link for you. It's in the description of the video. Check it out when you're ready. I'm gonna talk more about them and their classes towards the end. Let's see what let can do for you. First off, let's talk about the availability of the let function. It's available for Excel from Microsoft 365 and is currently in the preview version. Now the syntax of the let function, let's just start off with let, open the bracket. First thing we need is name one, and then it's name value one, and then it's your calculation, or you continue with more name and value combinations. Now name one is basically any name that you wanna give your number or your cell reference. Let's say VAT is my name one, and my name value one is 20%. Now I'm going to do a calculation. I'll take this number and multiply it with VAT. What am I going to get? I'm going to get 20% of this number. The syntax of this is very similar to what you're used to seeing under formulas name manager. If you create a new name, you get name and refers to is basically what you see in here. And this can be text, it can be a cell reference, it can be a formula. Instead of defining the name for the whole workbook or for a worksheet, you're actually just defining it for the formula. Now the reason you might want to do this in here is to make it easier to read. But in this specific case, it doesn't really matter because my formula would be much shorter if I just write B6 times 20%, right? But if I was using an if function and I'm using the 20% many times in this formula, it would be easier to maintain the formula as well. Because if that rate changes, I don't have to go and change all instances where I had 20%. I just change it once at the beginning of the formula. That's just one example, but let's take a look at more realistic examples. Let's get rid of this and do this example here. I want to calculate the variance in percentage between actual and budget, and I only want to show the values that are above plus 10% or below minus 10%. I don't want to bring attention to anything in between. Just bring attention to the bigger differences. This sounds like the if function. Before I start and bring in the if function, let's just calculate our difference. In this case, it would be actual divided by budget minus one. You can also write this differently. You can do actual minus budget in brackets divided by budget. It's the same thing. Now, when I press control enter, I see 10%. If I expand the decimals here, I can see it's 9.97%. So according to the logic I wanna create, this number shouldn't be visible because I don't wanna show numbers that are within this threshold. So let's go and put this inside the if function. If this is my logical test, if the absolute value of this is greater than 10%. So I'm actually going to put this in the ABS function to get the absolute value. You can say if this is greater than 10%, then I want to show the result. So I want to show this, or let's add the comma. I want to show nothing and that's quotation quotation now you can also use the or function instead of the absolute function so you can say or this is greater than 10 percent or this is less than minus 10 percent you get the same result so now when i press enter 
I shouldn't see this value because that's less than 10%. When I drag this down, I only see these values, right? So the bigger differences. This function is just an if function without let. But the moment you start to see repetition in your formula and they get longer, think about using let because if you ever need to change a cell reference, you don't need to change it in all instances of it. You just change it once. The repetition here is this formula. So I'm going to copy this, go to the beginning of the formula and start with let. The name I want to give this formula is var. Let's just call it var for variance. And I'm going to paste in the formula. Then is my calculation, right? Which is my if function. But now because I've defined a name for this, I'm going to change this to var. And you don't need quotation marks for these names here. And then press enter. And I need a second bracket because I have another function here. Let's say yes and send this down. It's another way of writing this. Now you can add as many variables as you want. So for this 10%, we could also add a variable. And to make this easier to read, you can also break it up by using Alt Enter. So let's say I want to add another variable for the 10%. I'm going to go down here, call that T for threshold and put 10% here, comma, let's do Alt Enter and replace the 10% with a T. Calculation comes last, press enter and send this down. And it's up to you how many variables you want to use. Now, does it really have an impact on performance if we use let on a large data set? Well, we're going to find out in a second. I just want to show you another application of the let function here. I'm just going to unhide this and take you to this formula here where I have three conditions. And instead of showing numbers, I'm showing three different symbols. Here, I've defined the same variable that I had before for my formula. And then I'm saying that if the change is greater than 10%, give me the up arrow. If it's less than minus 20%, show me the symbol, which means I should stop and react right now. And if it's less than minus 10%, but still not less than minus 20%, I should see the down arrow. By using var here, I avoid having to type this formula in many times. And in case I'm updating my references, I just need to update it once here. Now, if you're wondering how I'm getting the different colors, that's simply by using conditional formatting. So if I go to conditional formatting here and go to manage rules, Notice I have three separate rules here. If it's a down arrow and I go to edit rule under format, I've changed the font color of my symbol to be an orange color. And you can see the symbols here. Now, where did I get the symbols? Well, the up and down arrows I got from the insert symbols tab. And this icon here, I actually got from the windows icon. So if you use the windows key and the dot key, you come to the windows emojis here and then I just searched for it in here. You have a lot of choices and I inserted it on the sheet. Now, unfortunately, when you insert these emojis, they don't come with any color to get color. You can update their font color or use conditional formatting like I did here. Now let's take a look at performance. Does the let function make your workbooks faster? Well, in this case, it actually didn't have an impact. Let me show you. So this is where I did the testing. I replicated some numbers for actual and budget all the way to over 600,000 rows. And I wrote a similar formula like we had before, just instead of hard coding the symbols in the formula, I put them in cells and I referenced them. Now, the only formula that I have on this sheet is this one here. I didn't use conditional formatting because I didn't want to have any other features impacting performance. I just wanted it to be this formula. One version was to write it with the let function here. And second one was to actually use two variables. So I used T for the 10% threshold. I just left the 20% out and then the usual if function. And I calculated the time in milliseconds 
And here are my time comparisons. The way I did this was to use the add-in from Charles Williams from Fast Excel. If you're interested about this, I'm going to add the link to it in the description of this video as well. What I did was to run a full calculation on the sheet. So I ran it three times. Every time I got a different result and I wrote down this number. Then I changed the formula to the other one. I ran it and compared the results. And take a look at this. There doesn't seem to be much difference in using the let function here. Now, when we take a closer look at this formula, we're only dealing with single numbers. So we do repeat this formula, but the calculation is simple. So maybe Excel is really fast anyhow, and the let function doesn't add much value here, except it makes it easier to read and maintain the formulas. But what about if we use formulas that involve a lot of ranges? What about if we use dynamic array formulas? Let me take you to another example. In this case, we have a list of names, salary, department, and position. Our data set goes to line 74, right? So it's not a huge data set. What we want to do is calculate the average salary of all the departments, and then we want to get the average salary of each department and compare it to the average. And we want to flag our answers. So whether a department is above the average, we want to see above. If it's below the average by more than 10%, we want to see far below. And if it's below the average, but within 10%, we want to see in range. So we're going to use the if function here. But first off, let's start by calculating the average of all the departments here. And then let's get a unique list of departments. I'm going to use one of the new dynamic array formulas, the unique function, which is available in Excel for Microsoft 365. I want to get a unique list of departments right here. So now I want to do this part here in a single step. Before we use if or let or anything, let's just calculate the average salary for each department. Here I'm going to use the average if or average ifs. Now I prefer to use the ifs version because the moment I get more criteria, it makes it easier to update this existing formula. The first argument is the average range. That's where I have my numbers. Those are my salary numbers. So control shift down, highlight everything, control backspace to jump back up. The criteria range one, that's the department, control shift down and control backspace. Now the last option here is criteria one. That's this one, but here's the thing, I want it to spill. So I'm gonna use hash here, close the bracket, press enter, and I get the average salary for all the departments in one go. Since I don't want to return the salary, but instead I want to return the categories and I'm going to be reusing this function, I'm going to give this function a name inside the let statement. I'll just call it my val. My value is this. Now for the calculation, I'm going to start with if. My logical test is if my value is greater than this one, because we want to account for this case first. So if it's greater than the average, I want to see the word above. Otherwise, if my value is less than my average salary here, multiplied with one minus 10%. So my threshold here is 10% and I need minus to highlight the average salaries that are far below. Then I want to see far below. Otherwise, I want to see in range. And I need bracket, bracket, and probably another bracket, and that's it. Right, so for my sales, I'm in range, marketing and procurement earn far below the average, finance, legal, and management earn above the average. By repeating val here, that really saves me from writing this long formula here over and over again and making this even longer. Now, what about performance in this case? Well, I tested this also on a large data set. Let me show you my results. So I replicated this data set 
all the way to over 700,000 rows. And I did the same thing with let and without let and take a look at the difference. So this is the time in milliseconds when I run a full calculation on this sheet. You can see here it's nearly two times faster using the let function than without the let function. Right, so you do notice a considerable difference here. So in terms of performance, the let function is going to give you an advantage when you're dealing with formulas that do calculations based on huge ranges like this one. Otherwise, you can use it as a way to make the formula easier to read and easier to manage. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about the let function and you're ready for it when the time comes. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about Skillshare. Skillshare offers classes for lifelong learners. They're designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. The lessons can help you stay inspired, keep learning new skills, and introduce you to a community of millions. You'll find topics like productivity, business analytics, leadership and management, entrepreneurship, graphic design, and a lot more. Skillshare also keeps adding new topics and new classes so you can continue exploring and learning as much as you like. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description is going to get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can continue learning, exploring new topics without getting distracted by ads. After the two months are over, if you'd like to continue with your premium membership, it costs less than $10 a month if you get the annual subscription. Many thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to improve your skills, consider subscribing to this channel. I'm going to see you in the next video.